Hello, everybody. Uh, my friend sent me this uh, picture, so I posted it on Facebook. And <laughs> you see, they say it's partly false information. The June 2020 spike in U.S. COVID-19 cases indicates a rising percentage of infections and is not simply an artifact of more testing. But I thought this was really funny. There's an increase in COVID-19 cases because there's been an increase in testing. If more people took IQ tests, there would be an increase in idiots too. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I thought that was pretty, pretty funny. Speaking of, um, I wanted to read from you this article from Forbes. It's called, You Must Not Do Your Own Research When It Comes to Science. Research both sides and make up your own mind. It's simple, straightforward, common sense advice. And when it comes to issues like vaccinations, climate change, and the novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2, it can be dangerous, destructive, and even deadly. The techniques that most of us use to navigate most of our decisions in life, gathering information, evaluating it based on what we know, and choosing a course of action can lead to spectacular failures when it comes to a scientific matter. The reason is simple. Most of us, even those of us who are scientists ourselves, lack the relevant scientific expertise needed, needed to adequately evaluate that research on our own. In our own fields, we are aware of the full suite of data of how those puzzles pieces fit together and what the frontiers of our knowledge is. When lay persons espouse opinions on those matters, it's immediately clear to us where the gaps in their understanding are and where they misled themselves in their reasoning. When they take up the arguments of a contrarian scientist, we recognize that they're what they're overlooking, misinterpreting, or omitting. Unless we start valuing the actual expertise that legitimate experts have spent lifetimes developing, doing our own research could lead to immeasurable, unnecessary suffering. Yeah, you heard that right. Let's start with a simple low stakes example. Flora fluoridated drinking water. On one hand, fluoride is a simple ion that shows up in various concentrations, including naturally through calcium fluoride in bodies of water all across the world. When humans ingest too little of it, particularly at a young age, it leads to weakened to tooth enamel and greater rates of cavities. When humans ingest too much of it, it leads to tooth discoloration and various severities of dental fluorosis. In extreme cases, significantly too much or too little fluoride can also lead to other problems such as osteoporosis. I can't believe they even went there on this. Uh, in, in most cases in the United States and Canada, our drinking water is fluoridated. Yes, it is literally poisoned. Uh, and they started doing that after World War II where they learned it literally zombifies, pacifies the public. Anyways, um, it, it, it's, <clears throat> so they argue that we shouldn't pay attention to this because of the, you know, conspiracy people. It's just all conspiracy. There's an old saying that I've grown quite fond of recently. You can't reason someone out of a position they didn't reason themselves into. When most of us research an issue, what we're actually doing is formulating an initial opinion the first time we hear about something, evaluating everything we encounter after that through the lens of our gut instinct and finding reasons to think positively about the portions of the narrative that justify that support or justify our initial opinion and finding reasons to discount or otherwise dismiss the portions that detract from it. Of course, that's not what we think we're doing. We think of ourselves as the heroes of our stories, cutting through misinformation and digging up the real truth on the matter. We think that by just, just by applying our brain power and our critical reasoning skills, we can discern whose expert opinions are trustworthy and responsible. Oh no, you can't do that. We have, you have to be told. We think that we can see through who is a charlatan and a fraud, and we can tell what's safe and effective from what's dangerous and ineffective. Yes, like you, Forbes, with your propaganda piece here. Except for almost all of us, we can't. 
even those of us with an excellent critical thinking skills and lots of experience trying to dig up the truth behind a variety of claims are lacking one important asset, the scientific expertise necessary to understand any finds or claims in the context of the full state of knowledge in your field. It's partly why scientific consensus is so remarkably valuable. Yes, uh, as long as that consensus goes along with what you're promoting and not against it. It exists when the overwhelming majority of qualified professionals all hold the same consistent professional opinion. Hmm, what about all those doctors and scientists speaking out against the insanity of uh, lockdowns and mask wearing? It truly is one of the most important and valuable types of expertise that humanity has ever developed. This scientism, we should worship science, you know. We're too lowly to understand their expertise but only if we listen to it. It's absolutely foolish to think that you, a non-expert who lacks the very scientific expertise necessary to evaluate the claims of experts, are going to do a better job than the actual bona fide experts of separating truth from fiction or fraud. Yes, you need those fact checkers because you can't figure it out on your own. When we do the research for ourselves, we almost always wind up digging in deeper to our own knee-jerk positions rather than deferring to the professional opinions of the consensus of expert. Yeah, there's that consensus again. Uh, when it comes to fluoridated drinking water, the consequences may only be mild. A cosmetic barely visible markings on your teeth in the case of over fluoridation or a slight weakening of your tooth enamel in the case of under fluoridation. All, but the fluoridation is you don't need is the poison that they put in the water. But let's let's overlook that. Uh, but in the cases of a number of public policy measures, vaccinations, climate change, or the science of the novel coronavirus and the disease it causes in humans, COVID-19, the stakes are much higher. The consequences of getting it wrong can lead to permanent consequences and may even be a life or death matter for many. When left to their own devices, a substantial fraction of people will choose not to fully vaccinate themselves or their children. In some schools, up to 60% of children can be unvaccinated against preventable diseases, such as measles, oh my, leading to resurgence of diseases that should be eradicated. Many parents have a greater fear of adverse consequences from vaccines. Despite that, other than skin irritation at the injection sites, medical complications are extraordinarily rare, occurring in far less than 0.01% of patients and occur no more frequently than random chance would indicate. That's completely absurd. The science overwhelmingly indicates that vaccines are one of the safest and Health, public health interventions ever undertaken by humanity. But if you do your own research, you can find a small percentage of online activists and even a few medical professionals who will rail against the overwhelming science, putting discredited, pushing discredited claims, fear, and often unproven cures or supplements as well. This fraud-driven controversy created an enormous public health disaster that's still going on today. Oh, unbelievable. Similarly, in the field of climate science, it's overwhelmingly well understood that the earth is warming and local climate patterns are changing, caused by changes in the concentration of gases in our atmosphere, driven by human-caused, you nasty humans, emission of greenhouse gases from fossil fuels, and that this is having a number of adverse consequences, causing the change in food supplies, water availability, and land use all across the world. Yeah, That's, there's your climate change. Uh, this has been scientifically known and accepted by the consensus of active climate scientists for more than 30 years. And yet a sustained misinformation campaign, as well as new contrarian scientists, has shown sufficient doubt that anyone who's determined to do their own research can find boatloads of websites and documents confirming whatever conspiratorial line of thought they'd prefer. It doesn't change the scientific truth, but it has led to unprecedented inaction in the face of a problem. They can't have that inaction. They've got to ramp it up now. We've got to, got to make all these changes. You know, Agenda 21, sustainable development. 
right now, as we enter the month of August, this was back in August, it's a critical time for the United States and the world. We're in the midst of a global pandemic and the novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 and the disease it causes humans. COVID-19 has claimed the lives of more than two thirds of a million people in the United States alone. More than 150,000 have died. Yeah, well, and they've also put COVID on every cause of death since March. With each new day adding over an average of over 100 new deaths at present. This, the, their uh, experts have achieved a consensus about, in particular, the disease is airborne. It spreads easily indoors. Older people are more likely to get critically ill and die from it. Staying home except for essential errands and the interventions of wearing masks when you go out. But even those basic messages for which there's virtually no scientific doubt surrounding them have sparked enormous amounts of controversy. Despite the safety and efficacy of masks, many are refusing to wear them, leading to spikes in new infections. Oh my! Despite the importance of avoiding close contact with others not a part of your household, many people continue to visit friends and relatives, accelerating the spread of the disease. Cases does not equal disease, I will remind you. If you do your own research, you can no doubt find innumerable web websites, social media accounts, and even a handful of medical professionals who are sharing your opinions. But don't you dare believe those people. You stick to the, our scientific consensus. Do not fool yourselves. You're not doing research. You're seeking information to confirm your own biases and discredit contrary opinions. If you go by the evidence in the data, you're speaking the truth and it's amazing sometimes the denial there is. It, it's the same thing that gets people who are anti-vaxxers who don't want people to get vaccinated, even though the data clearly indicate the safety of vaccines. That's really a problem. There's no excuse with all the wonderful scientists and science communicators telling the truth about a whole slew of issues in our world. For people to seek out the only opinions that confirm their own biases. Yeah, you're not listening to us enough. But that requires a kind of transformation within yourself. Yes, they want to transform you so you won't argue. It means that you need to be humble. Admit that you yourself lack the necessary expertise to evaluate the science before you. It means that you need to be brave enough to turn your to the consensus of scientific experts and ask legitimately what we know at the present stage. And it means you need to be an open-minded enough to understand that your preconceptions are quite likely to be wrong in some, many, or possibly even all ways. If we listen to the science, we can attempt to make take the best path possible forward through the greatest challenges facing modern society. If we choose to ignore it, the consequences will only increase in severity.